Hello everyone, welcome to my brand new Let's Play series of Dead State Reanimated. I'm Colonel RPG and I'm very happy to have you here hanging out with me as I start a new campaign in this fantastic game. It came out back in December 2014, I bought it and played it back in December 2014, but I never really did finish it. And I've been delaying it, de delaying playing the game on the reanimated version, which is essentially an enhanced edition to the game that came out, I think, May 2015. So a few months after the re initial release of the game, you can see down here here, uh, it's the 2.0 version, and this, uh, yeah, I've been delaying it because I've been doing YouTube since then, so yeah, um, I think, I think it is a good time to play this game with you guys, I'm very hyped for this, because I really did enjoy this game very, very much back when it came out, this game was designed and written by Brian Mitsoda and Annie Mitsoda, his wife, and Brian is, uh, the guy that, uh, designed and wrote Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. He has teamed up uh, with um, Iron Tower Studios, you can see down here, Iron Tower Studio, of course, the guys responsible for The Age of Decadence. And uh, yeah, this game uses the same engine, the artist is also Oscar Velzi from The Age of Decadence. Um, and, uh, yes, I, I think also the programmer, there's a couple of programmers for this game, Nick, uh, the programmer for The Age of Decadence, is also one of them. So, yeah, Brian and his wife, they decided, I say Brian and his wife, I guess they, they both decided that, uh, they had a nice idea, and they did have a nice idea. This game is all about surviving in a post-apocalyptic, not a post-apocalyptic, a post, you know, like an apocalypse, zombie apocalypse thing. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a zombie apocalypse thing, you can see blood down here. Uh, and basically the world has turned to shit and uh, things are not going well for humanity and that's where you come in, that's where we come in and we're gonna start a new game um, I'm gonna go into... Uh, yeah, I'm basically going to a uh, normal difficulty so let's get started and here we are in character creation. You can choose your body type, the variation of the body type. You can e even make custom portraits. You can, you know, modify the glasses. There's all sorts of, st of things. You can also load photos. I've already loaded this photo. It's a modified version of one of the portraits that you can make with the game. And it, it kind of resembles me a little bit. So I'm going with it. And uh, yeah. So yeah, let's continue. And uh, so my name is going to be, let's say, James. And let's say... Uh, fire sun, fire sun, fire f mm, with a double N. I don't know what that means. James Fireson. Yeah, that's gonna be my name. Let's go with that one. So, do you wanna? Yeah, of course I wanna make custom. What do you think I am? I'm a role playing gamer, man. Just uh, of course, role playing gamer, man. Uh, so yeah, this is the character system. It's not as complex as the one from the Age of Decadence. The game doesn't really have as big of a variety in all. You know, it's not really the same sort of game. Uh, it's still very much about the, your choices and you know, about your decisions, but um, yeah, we, we have, it's a little bit simpler. We have strength, agility, vigor, and perception. So basically, there's two main combat archetypes in this game. You have melee or you have firearm. So melee and ranged, basically, that's how it goes. You don't need you don't need to have a good uh, fighting character to succeed in this game, but I am gonna have that because of early on you are gonna need to have uh, some some measure. Of fighting prowess to survive easily in the beginning, and since I don't want to restart, I, wanna, I don't want to uh, reload too much of the game. Um, I, I'm just, uh, just, uh, yeah, gonna go with a little bit of strength. Let's see, I have, I have it written down here as well. Let's see, three strength for me. I'm not gonna be a melee fighter. I'm gonna be a ranged fighter, which it used to be that wasn't a good idea, especially against zombies. You don't want to shoot too much, but the problem is later on in the game, you're gonna, well, also at the beginning, you're gonna be facing humans as well, so ranged is important, melee is, a, uh, melee is very important as well, but for right now, we're gonna go with three strength, that's gonna uh, change our carry weight, which is very important, that is very, very important, because you're gonna wanna loot everything if you can, because of course this is all about survival. We're gonna go with six agility, this modifies your action points, I think this gives me ten action points, um, uh, six points, I think that's uh, so that's 10, I'm not sure if it goes up to 14, but I'm pretty sure this one gives me 10 action points. I'm gonna go with no vigor because I am gonna be the guy that's gonna stay on the back, and besides, we can heal ourselves, so it's kind of fine. It should be fine, hopefully, and later on we're gonna be able to craft our own, uh, yeah, there's crafting in this game as well. Uh, we're gonna be able to craft our own armor and get, my, uh, get, get ourselves some nice armor as well. Perception, perception is very, very important for ranged combat. If you can have 10 perception, then that's better. I would go with zero strength, but uh, I kinda don't want, I kinda don't wanna give up on the loot too much. But anyway, you can min-max a whole lot there. I don't wanna 
go too far jack of all trades, but I also don't want to be, you know, the the sort of guy that's just gonna die at any at any point because not having too much strength is not gonna be too good for for uh, looting and all that. So let's see, we're gonna go with the. Um, oh, uh, by the way, yeah, I need to I need to uh, tell you about this particular mechanic. So the skills, how they work. So it's very easy to understand. You can see over there at level three. Uh, you can have that little circle over there, that one over there, and that one over there. So there's perks. There's like perks, or is it perks? Did the game tell me what it is? Perk, yeah. So there are perks at each point in the skill trees. Well, it's not really a tree, skill bar, I guess. So yeah, you can choose different, uh, for example, right now you can have, a, in melee, you can have backstab that increases your critical chance when hitting an enemy in the back. Or the playing gains plus 5 to their armor class permanent. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, and that's just basically how it goes. You, you need to make decisions as to what your character is going to be. I'm going to go with a five, on, 5 points on ranged. We're going to have vital shot. Basically, the, my logic here is I want to use firearms for humans. And I want to use um, melee weapons for zombies. Because we're going to be fighting zombies. I mean, it's a zombie apocalypse. So, yeah. So I'm gonna go with Vital Shot because I'm gonna be the guy who murders humans, well, that are trying to murder us. I'm not gonna be an evil guy, I'm gonna try and be a fair leader because, yeah, we have leadership. This basically is the crux of the game. Is that a proper word? I hope it is a proper word. So basically this game, you're gonna lead. You're gonna have to lead a group of survivors and that is very, very cool. There's some people uh, in the game that are not gonna agree with you right away. There's others that are, you know, can be swayed to your side. And leadership, there's gonna be quite a few uh, skill shack, uh, actually dialogue skill shacks uh, for leadership. Negotiation as well. I, I remember when I first played the game, I had these two at 8, or I had one of them at 10, I think. Uh, but it, ha it helps you a lot. Negotiation a little bit more, uh, because uh, it also reduces the morale decay, and morale is also an important thing. We're going to see this in due time. So I'm going to just give the, myself 3 over there, and uh, actually, yeah, I think that's not right. I'm not going to go with a 3 in leadership, I'm going to go with a 3 in negotiation. There we go. So here we can choose to be likable, or we can choose to uh, have our upgrades repair time decrease by 25%. This is not a big deal, because we don't really break our upgrades too often, at least in my experience. Uh, so I'm going to go with likable, because that's an additional 5 morale per day, so that's pretty, co pretty cool for the beginning of the game. And that is that! That's our uh, character creation done! Also, another thing that I uh, failed to, to mention, uh, so any uh, any Mitsoda, she worked in uh, Neverwinter Nights 2, A Storm of Zahir, the expansion, also in Guild Wars 2, and uh, lately in Dead State. I'm not sure where she's working, though. She, I mean, I'm not sure where Brian is working, either. Uh, I think he might be working, like, you know, like, uh, outsource uh, stuff for In Exile, maybe. I, I haven't followed him uh, in a while. Um, hope, hopefully they're doing well. Because they they do nice games. This this is a very nice game, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, the the Storms of Zeri expansion and Vampire Bloodlines. One of my favorite games, definitely, definitely, definitely. That's a word. That's a word, guys. Okay, so these are these are our stats. We can see our action points over there. That indeed, and our HP seventy is pretty good. I I think the first time I played the game, I had fifty, and I I survived more or less. <laughs> Let's start. Yes. James Fireson. Oh man, a old, an old name for me in, in video games. So let's continue. Oh, as you can see, that loading screen, very reminiscent of uh, the Age of Decadence. Let us beware of saying that death is the opposite of life. The living being is only a species of the dead, and a very rare species. This is from Frederick Nietzsche. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced, that name. Uh, which is a file, which was a philo philosopher? Philosopher, is that how it's pronounced? You'd counter yourself lucky to have gotten on a plane. There had been rumors of some kind of pandemic rapidly spreading across the world and people had been starting to get nervous. Flights were getting overbooked, delayed repeatedly and or outright cancelled. But you were in the air, buckled safely in your seat, enduring some light turbulence as you idly watched a newscast on the current world crisis when you heard a commotion from the front. Someone had staggered on the plane. You heard them struggling with their luggage and that wet, hacking cough for most of the flight. After the cough stopped, something started to happen up front. You heard a flight attendant scream and utter chaos broke, uh, break out in the front. People jumped out of their seats to try to help, but it only seemed to cause the situation to get worse. There was screaming, yelling for help, and the distant sound of someone banging on the cockpit. Then the horrible feeling of your stomach dropping as the plane tilted downwards. The scattered thoughts that accompany a fear of death. An awful cacophony of metal and earth twisting around each other filled your ears. And then there was only darkness and fire.
Okay, and uh, yeah, this is the game. Very reminiscent of the Age of Decadence. The graphics are pretty much the same. Uh, I do like the UI for this game a little bit more. Um, just, you know, just more according to my taste. All this paper and nice stuff. Um, but yeah, this this is the plane that just crashed. Ooh. Hello! Is anyone alive in there? This is Sheriff Reinhardt of Splendid PD. If you can hear me, follow my voice. You think the voice is coming from near the tail of the wreck? Mm-hmm. Let's explore. Uh huh. Okay, so we got a suitcase over here. We're trying to put out the fire to get to you. Keep following my voice. Look for something to defend yourself with, and whatever you do, stay away from the other passengers. You look around for a weapon. There's other passengers over there. I'm not really sure. No. Hmm. They're not really alive, are they? Hmm. Well, it's a good thing there's fire in between them and me. Okay, let's see what this suitcase has. Uh, the way this works in the game, you can drag and drop if you want, or you can select items like that and press that thing right there. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a very easy system later on in the game. For the beginning, it's actually a little bit confusing. There's no way, I don't remember There's any if there's any way to uh, right-click and just drops to your uh, beginning, but it works very well. Uh, so, yeah, we got an aluminum bat. An aluminum, actually, since it's American. So, aluminum bat, it would be... So let's see if we can put it to use, because we have what seems to be a burned man. And uh, yeah, he's not a tribal, he's actually a zombie. Can you still hear me? If you have to defend yourself, hit them before they grab you. Whatever you do, don't let them bite you. Okay, you're getting closer to the voice. Hmm, don't follow the voices, James. Okay, the zombie is on to me. You can see up here the uh, queue, and uh, the zombie's growling at me or something. Uh, so yeah, over here, down here, we have our weapons, pretty much like the Edge of Decadence, nothing really different, you can end your um, turn right there, or end the combat, and you get different types of attacks, you can use the basic attack, the push, and the stagger, you unlock more if you have melee, I think, so let's just go with that one, and there we go, he was almost dead, and he's dead, he got hit for 35 points of damage, and uh, press space, and it ends the combat, he didn't have anything on him though, let's keep, let's keep going, let's run from this wreckage, We've got the fire out down here, but the fire is out of control back there. It's going to explode. Run! You're almost there. Let's... Yeah, the zombies are gonna be gone. There's dead people here as well. You made it! You're safe now. We're going to help you. Hey, you okay? Hey, stay with me. Vic! Help me carry. Your voices... The voices fade and you pass out from the wounds. You wake up to the sound of people arguing. Your body is stiff and you can smell the unmistakable scent of rubbing alcohol. You feel like you've been sleeping off a horrible fever. The last thing you remember is the plane going down. Food? Who cares about food when we've got a, a huge hole in that fence? If we don't fix it, they're going to walk right in here. I know, Mum, but who's going to risk going out there? You? Me? Joel? Uh, I suppose I should be the one to go, being the cop and all. Kind of be nice if people was watching my back. Not my Renee, that's for damn sure. Let's not panic yet, all right? Oh, uh, so who, are, who are you people? He's up. Easy. I realize you have no idea where you are right now, but you're safe. You're in the basement of a school. I'm Davis. This is Anita. You should thank your lucky stars that my daughter was here. Mom? That's Renee, Anita's daughter. Oh, hi. Good to see you. You're finally up. Uh, behind her is Elaine. She's still recovering. And that's Joel. Yeah, that's me. I'm Joel. Officer Joel. I guess, technically. I'd be Officer Oswald if, uh, but you can call me Joel. Heck, any of those will do. Okay, it's nice to meet you all. Now, can someone tell me what's happening? Do you remember the plane crash? Uh, yeah, I wish I had never gotten on that flight. Well, I'm sorry. There were only a few survivors between the wreckage and they... Well, it was amazing that we were able to find anyone alive out there. Uh, well, I gotta... I... I... I have to go out there. I have to find them. It's been a week. No one's left out there. There's something else y you should know. You're in Texas, Central Texas. A town called Splendid. We're in the basement of the local school. Texas? Oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry to tell you, but you pretty much suck here. We all are. But don't worry, we have food, facilities, and a generator. And it's secure. Secure? What does that mean? I don't think you understand. Outside, it's not safe anymore. 
Everything has changed. You were on the last flight before they grounded the planes. They were trying to control the spread of a pandemic. It didn't work. Martial law was de declared. Shelters were opened. People were evacuated. Those that stayed behind, like me and the Wall Splendid Police Department, all three of us. Yeah, we were just trying to get the last few people out of the area when uh, your plane went down. Most of them were already... Well, you see the real danger out there right now is... There are things out there. Now's not the time. I agree. Look, this is a lot to take in. Why don't you come talk to me when you're ready? Take your time. The others go back to talking privately. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, these are going to be our companions. We have Anita. She is, uh, well, we're going to get to meet her, uh, get, to get to know her as the days go by. Because, yeah, the days are going to go by. This game basically takes place in days. So, you have, yeah, well, I think it's, uh, I, I reached day 50 or something. But I think the limit is day 80. And that's where, that's how the storyline goes. So, each day takes place. And you can use the time to scavenge, time to develop your relationships with all these people. Now, we have Davis over here. We have Joel. We have Renee, and back here we have Elaine. She doesn't say, she doesn't talk much. And that guy over there, I'm not really sure who he is. Uh, don't really remember. It's been a year, guys. It's been a year. Can I go into this door? I can. Let's go in there. Oh, I can't. Oh, no. Yeah, because they're blocking my way. Let's have a chat with Anita here. I'll tell Davis about, uh, I'll let Davis tell you about what's happening. Okay. Okay. So, I need to talk to Davis. What about Joel? Uh, yeah, I'd rather Davis explained it. He's a lot better at that. Okay, and yeah, so let's have a chat with Davis. Think you're up to uh, talking about our situation now? I mean, sure. Good, I'll get the others. What I'm about to tell you, it's going to be difficult to believe. In fact, it's hard to accept even when you've seen it with your own eyes. I'll say. Well, it's. I don't know if anything can shock me anymore. Let me explain. The illness that was going around, it doesn't just kill or make people lose their mind. It might not even be a virus. It's the end of the world, says Anita. Mom, we don't know that. Please, just tell me. The dead are coming back to life. Not all of them, but people are bit or killed by them. They seek out and attack the living, from what we know. It's not just here, it's everywhere, all over the world. What? Come on, this is some sort of reality TV stunt or something? Or is this some kind of apocalypse cult? Is that it? They all stare at me silently. All of them. All of them. You're serious? I'm afraid so. Well, let's just get out of here. There's nowhere to go. Around here, I mean, the only secure place in town right now is this basement. That's what I wanted to discuss. Well, what the hell are we sitting down here for? We don't know how long we're going to be here for. And the basement isn't really a long-term solution. We've got enough food to last us another week or so, but we're going to need to secure the entire school. So what do we need to make that happen? The fence around the school was being re refinished. Um, re re yeah, refinished when the town was evacuated. There's whole sections missing, which... Well, I've seen what's out there, says Anita. We're not safe. If those thi things find out we're inside... Well, if, if we want to move into the school upstairs, we're going to have to finish that fence. It's not completely down. With the proper supplies, we could fix it in a day. Well, it can't get very far, says Renee. We drained the fuel in the cars for power generator. Well, there's a hardware store over in Lano. It's a bit of a walk, but it's our best bet. You're going to want to bring back a toolbox and as many spare parts as you can. Getting that fence up is our only option. I... I know this is a lot to ask, especially given all that you've been through, but we really don't have a choice. Wait, just two of us? There's strength in numbers, someone else can come. Well, we're going to need someone to stay here and help me secure the windows and downstairs, uh, and doors upstairs, but I can't volunteer anyone else. Don't even think about taking my Renee, says Anita. There's no way I'm letting my little girl go out there. Mom, please, I can take care of myself. What if someone gets hurt? I'm the only one here with medical training. Take me if you have to. I don't want to have to fight, but you don't drive a big rig for 10 years without learning how to bust some heads. Oh, no you don't, Mom. If anything happened to you, well, I need a medic, but I also need someone who knows how to fight, because I don't think I'm going to have weapons. So at this point in the game, I think the best bet right now is going to be to bring Anita. You can, it's, it's fine to choose either way. The first time I played the game, I choose, chose Anita, but the second time I, I chose Renee, and that's the mission. The that's the playthrough I went with. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Anita. It's gonna be fine. She's gonna like us a little bit more. Renee is gonna like us a little bit bad, uh, less, but it's fine. She she's okay. 
Uh, so yeah, I need someone who can fight. Anita, you're going with us. Don't take my mom, can't you just... Uh, okay, it's decided. You three go to the hardware store in Lano and get a toolbox and all the parts you can carry. We'll secure the school's first... Uh, the school's first floor while you're gone. Okay, well, understood. Let's go. Okay, so we are in the school. The school downstairs doesn't really have anything, if I remember correctly. Actually, upstairs doesn't really have anything either. Uh, all you can do really is go through... Sounds dangerous out there. I should check that bag for a weapon. Yes, I should. Good good, good call, James. What bag? That one. Right. Ooh, a lot of things in here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that. I... Oh, no. This... Yeah. Why? Oh, that's the take all. That's right. That's the take all button. So, yeah, you need to uh, select everything to bring it back over there. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to take some bandages. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. No, that's parts. Okay. Uh, military ration. You don't need that for right now. We need these and this. And that is about that, I think. So we're good. We don't really have a weapon, per se. I mean, it's it's a start. But it's not the best thing ever. It's definitely not going to be the best thing for a while. Let's see. check these doors. Uh, the man is alive but unconscious. Yeah, I think he wakes up in a few days. Of course, we're gonna need to be here in a few days, so we must survive. So, turning off the automatic setting will immediately prevent upgrades that rely on electricity from running. So, oh, this did, wasn't didn't used to be in the game. I'm gonna yeah, let's go upstairs, and I'll show you how this goes. So, this is the the school upstairs. It kind of looks to me as an ordinary high school, normal. Plenty of storage space in that room next to the basement. Yeah, there's shelter shelter storage over here. Shelter storage. I'm gonna take care of the storage things on my own off camera because it does take a long while to sort through your items in between missions and all that. Because we're gonna go in missions and all that. So I'll close the doors. There's no point in keeping them open or closed. I don't think it matters. Uh, this is the kitchen. Uh, I don't think we can go in there though. Can we? Oh yeah, we should be able to. Yeah, we can go anywhere, everywhere. But it's not. There's no point in being around uh, for right now. So that's Anita's place. Uh, all through the school, there's gonna be all the NPCs. So Anita is over there. Renee is over here in the infirmary. Later, they're gonna move around a little bit. That is uh, Tra Joel, not Travis, Joel, and this is Davis over there. And uh, the school is quite big. As you can see, we got a gymnasium over here. We got uh, the science library sort of thing. We have the uh, mechanical thing or stuff. Yeah, I don't really know the names of those things. Uh, but yeah, let's have a chatty with Anita, see what she has. What's it, James? Well, is there anything you think you would make things better around here? Well, honestly, in my opinion, that fence can get sturdy enough. I've driven through enough of this state to know it's full of all kinds of quarries. If we can make some kind of some stone fence, I'd better I'd, I'd sleep better at night. Even those monsters w would find it hard to, uh, to mighty hard to claw through a uh, rock. Find it? Find it? It's, it's a typo. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you something else. Is there anything you'd like me to look for out in the field? My drinking days are past me, thank the lord, but I still count chocolate as a vice. Alexander spoiled me something awful with some fancy truffles when he was alive. Mm, I love truffles. And since his passing, they've always brought up fond memories of him. Aside from that, well, deodorant, if you can find it. When you're out on the road, you don't exactly get a lot of time to shower. I'd be embarrassed to tell you how much I counted on that stuff to make me feel like I could be seen in public during, the long, during a long trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important to know which, uh, what things each uh, of these guys wants. So she wants chocolate and she wants um, deodorant. So let me ask her about something else. Tell me about yourself, Anita. Well, I'm a big rig driver. Heavy transport. I took it uh, up shortly after Renee's father died. I hated to leave her, but I needed to support the family. But you know how it goes. I was on a road when I heard about how bad things were getting, and all I could think about was my daughter. I had to tell it to Baden Rouge, Rouge, Baden Rouge, to pick up Renee, and uh, man, then we tried to make it back home to Teos. You probably already guessed things didn't work out as planned. It's a good thing I have done runs through Texas multiple times, or we'd probably be stuck near Dallas. We started getting on these windy back roads in an attempt to get through this state, but even the, that started to be a trouble. After a while, there just wasn't gas to be found anywhere, even in these tiny little towns. When that voice came on the radio letting us know about this place, it was like a sign from heaven. Ugh. We really owe Davis our lives. If it wasn't for him guiding us here, I don't even know if we'd be alive. Well, maybe you probably wouldn't be. Let's see if I can ask her about something else. What would you say your skills are? So, well, I'm not the sort of woman that brags, especially about things like this. But you don't drive a truck for as long as I have without knowing how to fight. Just have to, you know... Just have to when thieves come snooping around. Aside from that, I know enough about fixing engines, just enough to get them to start, but I can rebuild one for to, to save my life. Is that the sort of thing you need to know? Yeah, it is. It is. Thank you. Uh, actually, oh, we don't have the thing here. 
Is it, did it change? Yeah, there's gonna be a thing here. We're gonna see that later. Uh, so we're gonna need to ask them uh, personally. So this first episode is just gonna be us getting to know everybody. And uh, yeah, so anyway. What's it like in the other areas out there? Do you know what I think? It's the end of the world. I pray to God it's not, but the signs are all there. The dead getting up and walking around? I can't quote scripture on it exactly, but I'm sure that's mentioned. I've seen things in the last week that I never thought possible. It's downright hellish in some places with all the bodies and fire and gangs. For the first time ever, I'm, I'm glad Renee's father isn't alive, so he didn't have to go through this. Yeah. Anyway. We'll talk later, Anita. We'll talk later. Oh, yeah, it's the end of the world. Oh, the soda machine here. Do they work? Oh, you can get sodas. Oh, I, I will take all the sodas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I take sodas forever? No, I can't. Okay, that's just soda machine. Snack machines take all of those. Uh, it's not really... I'm not really sure what those are good for right now. I don't remember, but you're, you're gonna want to take everything. Let's just put it on the storage thing. Where's the storage? Where, where did I come out from? Hmm, the storage is over here. Yeah, there it is. Storage shelter. No, shelter storage, actually. So, yeah. You're gonna drop stuff. I'm gonna bring the stuff downstairs here as well, but not on camera. Let's put that over there. Also, let's equip our stuff. Uh, that's gonna be weapon 2, and this is gonna be weapon 1. There we go. And let's continue talking with everybody with a wrench in hand and a knife on the other one. Let's go ahead and uh, meet Renee, see what she has to say about this situation. Looks like a nurse's station. Not really much use for serious injuries. Well, not right now. Afraid I used the last of our medical supplies on you, she says. How's your head? Well, it's fine. I did the best I could. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm grateful. It was nothing. Well, it was. You were pretty beat up. I'm, I'm just glad I could help. You're too young to be a doctor. Are you studying medicine? Uh, not quite. I'm training to be a doctor. I was finishing up another semester of vet school when mom... Vet school? Oh, uh, yeah. Veterin veterinary medicine, actually. I, I, yeah, I'm not really trained on humans. I keep telling people that, but they keep treating me like I'm a doctor, and, I'm, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Let's talk about something else. How did you get it? How did you get here? Well, I was at school when mom just showed up. She was worried about my safety. I guess most people were, but we were too busy in, with school to notice. Anyway, anyhow, mom, she's a truck driver. She wanted to drive us back to New Mexico. We've got family there. It was more secure than Baton Rouge, anyhow. Mom's breezed the route plenty of times before, but, you know, with all the traffic and then Dallas being cut off, well, we were forced onto the back roads. We're almost out of gas, and Mom was trying to find help on the radio. That's when Davis told us about the school. The splendid police brought us here when the truck died a few miles out. We've been here ever since. What are you, what? So, what are your specialities? Well, they've been having me patch people up here because of my schooling, but people aren't really my specialty. So, yeah, it's okay. I'm sure you'll do. Uh, you'll be a real asset. I'll do what I can. Okay. So, um, how bad is it out there, in your opinion? Well, I saw things on the drive here. This woman darting out in front of a car to have someone take her kid. This duffel bag on the side of the road squirming around. The sound of the gunshots when people try to run the roadblocks. I try not to think about it as much as that's possible. Yeah, your mother's just trying to protect you, but I trust you to watch my back out there. I don't know why anyone feels the need to protect me. Guess I have that kind of face or something. Eh, yeah, apparently. So, what do you think of me? Well, I don't really know you. You're a fast healer? Jeez, that's a weird thing to ask. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so what um, What do you think would make this place better? Uh, I think it'd, be, it'd feel better if we took in some more people. There's got to be others out there looking for shelter. There's plenty of room here. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. I mean, what do you personally want? Oh, there's... There were... Oh, no, wait, I asked a different thing. I, have to, I didn't look at the question. There were two. Elaine's been a wreck since... Oh, yeah, about the other survivors. That's what I asked. Elaine's been a wreck since they found her at the crash. She was pretty traumatized by something. I've tried everything I know to get to her. Maybe you'll have more luck. The other survivor had worse injuries than you. To be honest, there's not much I can do aside from change his bandages and wait. Hmm, so tell me what you think would make this place better. No, I wanted to ask her about what she wants, but apparently that's not possible. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look around. Let's meet this other survivor. She's upstairs, if I remember correctly, so yeah, I think she's over here. There she is, Elaine, yeah. She doesn't talk much, as I said. Let's have her chat with her. She's crying. It's all my fault. What? Are you okay? I, I can't. She starts to cry again. What's... What's, what's wrong with you? 
She's crying. Okay, forget it. Yeah, she's not gonna snap out of it for right now. You don't need to... I don't think it makes a difference to be brusque with her or it doesn't change anything, so I might as well not do it. Let's have a chat here with um, Joel. Actually, let's meet Davis and on our way out, we're gonna meet with Joel because I think he's gonna come with us. Who's coming with us? Yeah, it's gonna be Anita and Joel. Yeah, those two are coming with us. So, hey, come on in. There's Shadow on the radio. Let's hear the... Listen to the radio. Where the hell is the radio? I don't... Oh, yeah. In, oh, there it is. There it is. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Lane on the Fast Lane here at KHEK, entering its height, eighth day of broadcast, bringing you the latest news and freshest sounds of what might be the end of the world. Earlier we heard Squirrel Jelly with someone left the light on, and before that we heard the sounds of me eating protein bar. Mmm, yummy. Uh, now on a serious business, uh, I just got a report on the emergency system, and this is very important. Pay very close attention to this, this, this. This is a bulletin straight from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and you know me. I'm not a serious guy, but this just might save your life. According to this, uh, wait, let me just read this part. Antibiotics taken daily with control, but not cure, will control, but not cure the infection. Infected individuals that take daily doses of antibiotics will not show any symptoms nor progression of the disease. So if you're listening to me and you know how to get antibiotics, I highly advise you get a stash on hand for emergencies. It just might save your life, I repeat. Well, the DJ continues to repeat the same announcement. Okay, so let's have a chat with Davis. How can I help? Well, uh, oh yeah, you can ration the settlement, anything, oh yeah, okay, so I know why the thing that I thought was gonna hap appear didn't appear. But anyway, anything that would improve your mood? I uh, wish I could call my daughter, but yeah, more realistically, I guess I could use some real coffee beans that would make mon monitoring the radio easier. The other one would be nice, gets a bit hot in, the, in here most days. I'll let you know if I come across any. Uh, can I ask you a, f a question? Of course. Where am I? You're in Texas, a town called Splendid. They evacuated the town, so we're all that's left. It's a long story. We should talk about this when we have more time. Okay, what else can you tell me about the weeks before I got here? Well, it all happened rather quickly, to be honest. One day the news was reporting about a mystery illness. The next they were calling, the, talking about tr travel restrictions and civil unrest. All of a sudden, the nation was under martial law and major cities were being evacuated. Like most people, I didn't really believe the dead were coming back to life until I saw it for myself. I guess that's how it's gotten this bad. We're dealing with it as best we can for a town this size. I'd like to hope the rest of the world is doing the same. Hmm, yeah. So what can you tell me about the people here? Joel and I are locals. Joel's a police officer and I've worked here at the school. Anita and Renee ran out of gas not far from here. I picked up their distress call on the, on the radio. We picked up another survivor in the plane crash, but uh, he hasn't woken up yet. I guess we'll have to wait and see if he recovers. The other woman, that's Elaine. She's been through a lot. Maybe you should try to talk to her. Just be patient. They're a lot stronger than you think. Well, hopefully. Uh, how should we improve this place? Uh, well, I... I I can think of a couple of things, but most of all, I think people will be happier if they feel safe. Though it might be important for you to ask around and see what the others want. Keeping the school stocked would, um, with food, fuel, medical supplies, creature comforts, and other th items would go a long way around here. Okay, well, I should go do that now. And uh, that's gonna be it for this episode. Yeah, this game... Don't feel strange about us talking a lot about these guys and to these guys, because this game is a lot about interpersonal relationships and how they like each other and all that. These guys kind of all get along. Elaine is really the only real problem for right now, uh, but we are going to need to know them well enough, and they're going to be a big part. I really like how the game does, does the storytelling, and they're going to be a big part in us uh, just getting on with our lives and their lives as well. But for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Dead State Reanimated. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I sure know that I will, and I am already. This game is really, really a blast, and I love it very much. And if you did enjoy it, or if you didn't, if you have anything to say at all, leave a comment down below, like the video, but above all, above everything else, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.